Hello and welcome. I'm Bob La Liberté of the Cube Research, and today we're super excited to be at the New York Stock Exchange with Juniper, where they rang the opening bell. And today I'm really proud to have Manoj Lilavanas here, COO of Juniper Networks. Welcome, Manoj. Great to be here, Bob. Yeah, so obviously a very exciting day, 15th anniversary on the Stock Exchange, getting to ring the bell. And on top of that, doing one of the Juniper AI Native Now events here. So a lot of customers coming in, learning more about that. For everyone who's watching at home, maybe you could give an introduction or an overview of the AI Native networking platform that you announced earlier this year. Like you said, it is wonderful to be here at the opening bell. When you think about networking, you think about connectivity. But we want to transcend connectivity. Networking has to be all about the experience. The experience about the end user and how do you actually have simplified operations for the people who actually use the networks. Imagine a Taylor Swift concert where you're missing a couple of seconds or maybe even a minute of that concert. People won't like that. Correct. Or most recently there was the French Olympics. Imagine 100 meter dash and you missed the last few seconds. Correct. So you want networking to be highly experienced. And our focus is to make sure that for our operators, we give completely simplified experience in terms of operations, simplified operations for their network, and for end users, superlative experience. And whether it's in the team or Zoom or whatever, you're having the best experience possible. And the AI native network is all about providing that. Okay. And how does it do that? It actually does it because we have been collecting telemetry. Right. We've been collecting multiple data points from users from access points, from switches, from routers, security devices for eight years now. So lots of data. And then we have this amazing cloud native platform, which has been using the telemetry, running our AI engine on top of it. And it's been this amazing thing, which can actually almost predict problems in the network. So we almost are at a point where the network is almost self-healing. 80 to 90% of the problems are corrected by our marvelous AI engine. So in much similar ways as you have a self-driving network, a self-driving world happening with you know, the Teslas and the AVs. Yep. You have a self-driving network forming here, and that's what the AI Native Network is all about. It's about providing the simplicity for customers, providing assurance for the customers, and amazing increase in productivity. And that's what this AI Native Network provides. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, and I think we're starting to see more and more organizations looking to adopt AI Right, they're understanding some of those challenges around complexity and so forth, and, and really starting to see that AI is going to help them and enable them to do their, their job better. So I'm wondering if you could share maybe a little bit about how some of your customers who've already adopted that platform, and maybe a little bit um, you know, what they're saying to you about it and, and how it's changed their day-to-day -day activities. I have a lot of use cases to share, but I think let me start with one of our early customers. ServiceNow, before they, deployed Juniper, they had a lot of trouble tickets in IT networking. And once they deployed Juniper, missed, they were able to eliminate almost 90% of their IT networking trouble tickets. What does this mean? Valuable time back to people so they can actually do better work, you know, changes the whole equation in terms of cost. You're not thinking about, um, you know, resources, you're not thinking about truck rolls and whatnot. Yeah. Similarly, Gap, one of the retailers, well, you know, strong retailers in the world, Ever since they moved to Juniper, they've been able to eliminate 85% of the truck rules. One of the largest logistics providers in the world, out of the top two, when once they moved to Juniper, 85% mean time to resolution has been reduced. 85% reduction in MTTR, that's amazing. So the list goes on. If you look at higher education, one of the top technology universities in the world, they, they deployed Juniper over summer and the code from the head of IT was, deploying Juniper was like waking up from a dream. <laughs> and most recently, I think this is another public reference, Dartmouth College. Okay. They were able to get MIST up and running during the COVID time. It took just 12 hours to get all their dorms up and running with 2,000 access points and everything was ready to go. Yeah. And kids, uh, students could come in and have the Zooms and Teams and everything, and everything was working flawlessly. It's the speed of deployment, it's how we eliminate the problems before they happen, and even if problems happen, how quickly we resolve them. So we give valuable time back to people, saves a lot of money, and saves a lot of time, uh, so a lot of resources in terms of people too. Yeah, so one of the things that was intriguing about that, you had commented 
that organizations were able to deploy very quickly and get up and running very quickly. AI tends to be, while the technology that you've built is incredibly sound, there's always that cultural aspect and what I like to refer to as a time to comfort. I wonder if you could comment on what you're seeing from customers who are adopting from deployment to actually getting in and, and really, I guess, taking hold of that AI, really adopting it, really under, you know, believing in it and validating that the recommendations are correct, that the fixes are correct. How long does it usually take DC organizations for that time to come for? It's a very good question because AI and integrating AI is actually quite complex. Right. Uh, and there is always this learning curve sometimes. There is always the knowledge gap, skills gap. You know, you don't get enough people who knows AI well and training people isn't easy. But this is where Juniper has taken a brave new step in terms of reducing the time to get to be AI comfortable and actually AI native as soon as possible. Right. So this is our enterprise blueprint. And why do we do that? You know, and what do we do in that? Smoothing the entire adoption phase, entire phase of you know, testing, procuring, adoption, as well as deployment, and then finally operations. So how can we get people up and running faster? And we're putting a specific set of programs, curated curriculum, training courses, and also a lot of hand-holding to get people up and running and going fast. So this is the enterprise blueprint, and we are able to deliver almost 9x the value compared to anything else out in the industry. We are really creating a self-driving network, but it's very easy to adopt. Awesome, so this is, and obviously this was something you announced today, bringing out the blueprint, and so you have already had customers who've deployed and gotten tremendous value. Now you're learning from those deployments and putting together a more structured program that enables organizations to really accelerate that time to value, accelerate the time to trust and validate those that AI native networking platform for their organization. That's 100% right. We learned a lot from all of our customer deployments, a lot of things which worked really well, and a few things which you can do better, and we have packaged everything in a systematic way in this blueprint. Excellent, excellent, that sounds great. Now, I also know that you know, some of the challenges with adopting a network across an end-to-end -end environment is it can get quite detailed, it can get quite intricate, especially when it comes to pricing and licensing and so forth, things like that. Um, I'm wondering if you can tell us, uh, I think you had some announcements today also on that front. So if you could give us some of the details and share with the people watching what it is that Juniper's doing to help simplify the purchasing process. Yeah. We actually made it super easy in terms of you know any use case people want to try. And if they like that use case, they can go to the next use case and so on very easily. For instance, uh, doesn't matter whether it's subscription or perpetual, whatever model you want. And more importantly, if you want to bundle multiple use cases together, we have what you call as the enterprise agreement. So you can have it in a package form, you know, where it's more standardized you know, by the standard, and we can even customize the enterprise agreement. For instance, if you're buying Wi-Fi and wired, you're not buying SD-WAN, but you're buying routing, you can actually package an enterprise agreement in such a way. So it makes it simple, flexible, and also repeatable you know, for taking to different customers and making it easy for our customers and partners. In addition, we're working with our partners to provide network as a service, which is a flexible buying model. Right. You know, people like different business models, they want to pay as you go, they want to lease certain things, they want to try for three, you know, three months, and then maybe not go forth. They have the flexibility to make that decision now because we can actually provide network as a service, working with partners who provide that service with Juniper equipment in a very packaged fashion. Got it, yeah, and I think it makes a lot of sense for you to be doing that, especially given the extensibility of your AI engine, right? When we, when we recently uh, conducted some research, 600 or so respondents across North America and Europe, and they came back and we asked them what some of the biggest AI challenges were, and the number one was we don't have a single AI engine to go across our end-to-end -end network. And essentially, that's what Juniper has just done, right? So across the WAN, wired, wireless, data center, routing, et cetera, you've really got a single engine. So now you're bringing those, that enterprise agreement and the NAS type to, to enable the simplify organizations to take advantage of that end-to-end -end environment. You said it very well. Across all use cases from wired, wireless, SD-WAN, data center, routing, everything. You, know, you can take what you want. And the best part is that we also have this new capability we announced a few months ago yep. called Marbis Minis, yes. which is the digital twin for the network. So now we can completely model the network or say tomorrow your CEO is having a major, very important video conference. You want to make sure that 
you can mimic that environment exactly at that time, ahead of time, to find out, oh, is there a problem with the DHCP server at that time? So you can figure out all these problems ahead of time so that the experience is flawless when your CEO has this important video call. So you have the ability to do these digital twins across the network, and that's an amazing new invention, which further amplifies you know, our focus on the experience first network, but more importantly, it actually simplifies the adoption curve. Uh, eases the adoption curve for our customers. Uh, well, look, I think we could we could probably sit here all day and go back and forth talking about this, but I think that's that's all the time we have today. So, I uh, want to thank you, Manoj, for for being here. I want to thank everyone for joining us as well. Uh, and obviously, if you want to learn more about Juniper and what they're doing with their AI native now and their AI native platform and some of the announcements today, please visit their website. Again, I'm Bob LaLiberté from the Cube Research, signing off from the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs>